Now the first method is to estimate the stress at any point below the ground level due to a point load applied on the ground level. Now the Boussinesq equation was proposed by the mathematician Boussinesq and it gives the stresses distributed in an elastic medium with a point load on the surface. Now just like any theory proposed in geotechnical engineering, it comes with an assumption set. Assumptions being the usual ones. The soil is an elastic continuum, the soil is homogeneous, the soil is isotropic, the soil is semi-infinite and the soil is weightless. And these are the usual things that we use to tag with any theory portions. Right? These are the usual assumptions. I believe we have already discussed almost every terms except perhaps the semi-infinite. Now semi-infinite just means that the soil volume that we consider is of an infinite extent below the ground level but above the ground level it's of no extent. It simply means the ground that, that we all stand and walk on. It's of an infinite extent below but it's not of any extent above it so it's semi-infinite. Of course the soil is considered weightless here. We have discussed what isotropic homogeneous elastic continuum etc are in the previous modules in the, pre in the previous semester. Now every time I used to discuss the theory portion, every time I say about the assumption, I always say that these are nothing but the demerits. Right? The, the assumptions gets reflected as the demerit. Nonetheless, we'll start with the discussion on the equation proposed by Businesk. So you fundamentally have got the ground level there and you're applying a Q point load over it. And you need to find the stress intensity at a point P, which is at depth Z below Q and radial distance R away from the axis. So R and Z or Z represents the point P with respect to the point of application of the load Q. Now the vertical stress at the point P which is the target point is given by sigma ZP which means vertical stress in the Z direction at the point P. It's given by IB into Q by Z square where Q capital letter Q is a point load, in point load intensity given in kilonewton usually. So it's a point load. Z or Z is a depth in meters. IB is a term proposed by Businesk which is given here. So uh, the sad news you will have to buy hard this equation. So IB is equal to 3 by 2 pi into 1 by 1 plus R by Z square the whole raised to 5 by 2. So you can see from the equation that these two equations clubbed together will give you a feeling that as Z increases sigma decreases. Again, as radial dis distance increases, sigma decreases. So that's that's a that's a takeaway from this equation. Now, the few comments that could be said about this equation. The value of IB for R by Z equal to zero is 0 0.4775. Now, this is a famous term for R equal to zero, which means just beneath the point load, IB turns to have a value of 0.4775. IB is equal to zero usually or assumed to be zero when R by Z is 10 or greater than that. Now, another comment that could be added with this equation is that as the Young's molars and mu Poisson's ratio are absent in the equation, you can say that the stresses will be the same for all linear elastic materials. So this is not limited to soil. It gets applied to all linear elastic materials. Now theoretically, at z equal to zero, stress is infinity. That's what the equation proposes. But in actual practice, it's not. In practice, the formulation transfers low not on the ground level, but at depth. So every time we cast a foundation, it will be at some depth below the ground level. For instance, if you have an individual footing to carry two-story buildings, it's usually, of course it depends on the soil strata, but it's usually at a depth of 1.5 meters from the ground level, at least 1.5 meters. 
right? So we have a footing of 1.5 by 1 meter in plan and if it's expected to carry two story building loads, it can be at a depth of 1.5 meter. It's never on the ground level. So that's one demerit. In general, the Bosonisk equation gives you conservative values. So another one is that the pure that the soil is never purely elastic, which we assume here. Soil is never purely elastic, and Young's model E of sand usually increases with the increase in depth. So in short, Bosonisk equation can be used to estimate the stress intensity, the vertical stress intensity due to a point applied load at the ground level. Now when it comes to a stress distribution due to a strip or a line load, you can have two cases. Case number one, the point under consideration or the target point is not below the center of the strip. So let's assume that there's a strip of breadth 2 small letter b or equal to capital letter b and let it be loaded by a uniformly distributed UDL of intensity Q as shown in figure, right? So you have a strip load of Q intensity and has a width of 2B. Now this is a width, not the length, which means that the length of the strip is perpendicular to the screen that you see. This is a breadth. 2b and the length of the strip is perpendicular to the screen that you see. So in such a case, let's assume that the point load is not below the center of the strip. Let's assume that the point load, I mean not the point load, the point is P which is not at the center is marked here, right? So P is never at the center in this case, it's at some distance away from the center. Now I can have subtended angles like this, B1 is an angle subtended with the normal to the first point of the strip and B2 is angle subtended by the second point of the strip with the normal. The 2 theta being the angle made at the center. B1 and B2 angles made by the line, P be the point and the angles with respect to the vertical or the normal are marked in green highlights. Now, 2 theta, if that's the angle subtended by the strip at the point P, as you can see here, strip subtends an angle 2 theta at the point P, you can estimate the vertical stress sigma ZP by this equation, Q by pi into 2 theta plus sine 2 theta cos 2 phi. Now phi is equal to the average of beta 1 and beta 2. So while trying to work out the problems, one cautionary note I'd like to add is that you need to take care of the unit here. 2 theta is given here, whereas here it's sine 2 theta. So you need to have this not in angles but in radians. Now, this case number 2 is at the point is below the center of the strip. Let's take the same example breadth 2b point I mean uh, UDL of intensity Q so the same figure comes here except for one difference P is at the center so earlier P was somewhere away from the center now P is at the center of the breadth of the footing so 2 theta was the angle subtended by the breadth at the center P now it has theta here, it will have theta here, so adding together it gives you 2 theta at the center. Now phi, the angle defined as the average of beta 1 and beta 2 in the previous equation, the previous uh, figure turns out to be 0 here because beta 1 is theta, beta 1 is theta here and beta 2 is negative theta because it's in the other direction. Right, so when you take the average, it turns out to be zero, which means the vertical stress at the point P below the center of the strip can be defined by the same equation that we had earlier, but the difference being phi is equal to zero. Right, so when you have phi is equal to zero, the equation boils down to Q by pi into 2 theta plus sine 2 theta. 
Now, when you consider the stress beneath the circular area, let's assume there's a circular area of radius capital R, as you see in this picture, and let there be a lower intensity Q over the circular area, right? Like this. Now, compared to the Bosinesk equation, one thing that you need to take care of is that Q will be in kilopascal or kilonewton per meter square or force by unit area. Whereas in Bosinesk equation, it will be in kilonewtons or tons or whatever unit is given in the question. Here, it's a distributed area. And in the previous case, in the strip law, it had to be in kilonewton per meter or load per running meter. Here it's kilopascal usually. Now, when you have Q kilopascal load intensity applied over a circular area of radius R, you're interested to find the stress intensity at a point P beneath the center of the circle at a depth Z. Now, the vertical stress at the point P below the center at a depth Z is given by sigma ZP is equal to IC into Q. So there's another term, influence term, IC, equal to 1 minus 1 by 1 plus R by Z square whole raised to 3 between. Now this R is a radius, Q is a stress intensity. So when you substitute R by Z equal to 0, you get IC is equal to 0. And when you get, when you have R by Z is equal to infinity, you get IC is equal to 1. So, for a very large loaded area, the vertical stress at a relatively shallow depth will be Q itself. So, that's the reflection from the equation. Now, usually the circular areas, I mean the circular loads are quite popular in case of cement silos or water tanks, circular ring cross section. Stress is under a corner point of a load on a rectangular area. I have a rectangle here of L by B in dimension and of is of applied with a Q intensity, stress intensity in kilonewton per meter square. And I am interested to find the stress intensity sigma P or sigma ZP at a point P which is beneath the corner of the rectangle. So it's not at the center, it's beneath the corner. So for a rectangle of sides B and L, the vertical stress at a point Z, depth below the corner, is given by a simple equation, sigma ZP is equal to Q into IN, where IN is an influence factor given by this equation. Every time I used to discuss this equation in the class, before we had the panamic situation, I used to see an expression in student faces like this. So you don't have to worry, you don't have to mug up the equation. You can get the value of i n based on charts. Now, if you have just two terms here apart from pi. You have just two terms, m and n. Now, if m is equal to b by z, or the shorter dimension by depth, and n is equal to length by depth. So, if you're good in mugging up this equation and by hearting the terms, it's okay, but if you're not, you can depend on the chart called a Fadham's chart and you can get influence value IN, influence number for M and N. So it looks like this influence factor based on M and N. You can get a copy of this in the standard textbooks. For instance, if I have length L and breadth B and Z depth, I can have values of M and I can have values of n. For instance, if I have to find i n for m of 1 and n of 0.5, all I have to do is take the value of m here, go up the line and see the point where it meets n is equal to 0 0.5. So it turns out to be here, right? So go leftwards and try to see the intercept at the y-axis. So that's I n point one two. Likewise, 